Zexi Lee joins us right now. Zexi, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Listen, I'm wondering uh, how you're feeling right now. You, you've been living in and amongst the chaos, the loud noise, uh, the profanity for weeks now. How do you feel uh, as you watch Ottawa police and others move in on the protesters? Uh, I'm incredibly grateful that it looks like all of this is finally coming to an end. Uh, while I think the response is long overdue, it is definitely um, a relief either way. Talk to us about uh, what you have gone through these three and a half weeks or so, uh, because on social media, many people in the Centertown area of Ottawa describing conditions uh, much like torture. Um, I think it is lost on a lot of people, the extent of the suffering that was inflicted upon the residents of Centertown, uh, especially in the first 10 days of this occupation, uh, an occupation that has been illegal from the start. Um, the constant, constant uh, sound torture was incredibly distressing for myself, but for many other residents who may suffer from mental illness, who have certain conditions, and even babies and young children, um, the suffering that was inflicted is was absolutely unacceptable, and it was consistently diminished by all levels of law enforcement and government uh, for far too long. Well, let's pick up on that point. What do you mean by that? What was it like to, to, to be hoping that action would be taken and for days and weeks, none was? Uh, it was incredibly disheartening every single day to wake up and know that while some police may be on our streets, they were either instructed or refusing to enforce the law that they had committed to uphold. And then in addition to that, hearing the dispassionate response from leadership in our city, uh, for the most part, obviously there were some shining lights of hope in the form of individuals like Catherine McKenney. But uh, for the most part, those with power, those with the ability to help us, refuse to do so. Why do you think that is? Um, I am not a mind reader. Reader, I can only say so much about the reasoning behind the inaction that we had seen for many, many days. Um, I think part of it is that there were very difficult decisions to make. It was a, like they said, unprecedented situation. However, at the end of the day, we elect our leaders and they are employed to make these difficult decisions and have the information necessary to make the best decision specifically for the residents. And that simply did not happen. Um, there was a clear dereliction of duty from many levels of government, to be quite honest. And it was extremely difficult for the residents of Centertown to have to rely on one another rather than relying on the institutions that are supposed to protect us. Now, you uh, bravely stepped forward, and because of your actions, an injunction uh, was granted that stopped the, the, the constant blaring of horns uh, during this protest and occupation. And to my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, your injunction is now being used uh, in terms of the charges being filed against protest organizers. Uh, how does that feel? Um, it's a sense of gratification. Um, because ultimately, from the very beginning, what these individuals have done to us and what these individuals have incited others to do to us have been completely illegal from the get-go. Um, I think I'm a little sad that it is my injunction that has to be used at this point, considering that the first injunction should have most definitely been from the city, not from a resident who was so desperate that they need to take action by themselves. But I'm grateful, nonetheless, that the charges are being laid and the injunction is being considered as part of these charges because at the end of the day, they broke the law countless times and many people suffered for it. And I believe very strongly that they must face the consequences for that. 
You, you know, the, the, the noise aside, there certainly were many reports uh, these past weeks of people being uh, verbally harassed, uh, in some cases even uh, physically, to my understanding, uh, people being targeted for uh, their, their, their sex, their, their ethnicity, uh, their uh, sexual orientation, gender identity. What has it been like for you? Has it affected your feeling of safety in your own neighborhood? Without a doubt. I think from day one, for most of us, to be quite honest with you, the feeling of the, the tension in the air that having these people in our streets has brought upon us, and in addition to that, the blatant um, disregard for the law, it created an environment in Centertown where anything could go. People were breaking the laws left and right while police watched. And the only thing that begets is more law breaking. And, at, and very clearly, it continued to escalate. And yes, violence of many, many kinds were inflicted upon the residents of Centertown. And it's honestly unbelievable how little attention was paid toward this until it was already, quite, quite frankly, too late. Um, and mind you, it wasn't only the individual characteristics that were targeted. Even if you were wearing a mask, just a mask, which was your right to protect your health and safety, especially with all the diesel fumes in the air, you were an instant target. There are individuals who knowingly took off their masks when in downtown because they would be specifically harassed. People yell at you on the streets to take it off. People honked at you because you were wearing a mask. And they relished in the fear that we felt. They would cheer when we flinched from the honks. And when I say we, I can speak to this personally as well. But the... Sorry. It's okay. It, it's okay. It was, um, it was, it was difficult. It was very difficult, and um, a lot of the violence that did occur within our streets were unseen. And the narrative that this was a peaceful protest has been utterly untrue from the start. From the noise torture that was the part of the original plan for these individuals, and to the countless individual experiences that people have had just living in downtown, it's completely unacceptable. You know, it, it's one of those hard realities that once you, your safety in your own home is compromised, it, it's hard to ever feel that safe again. How are you feeling right now, knowing that police are enforcing uh, this, this abandonment of the camp and criminal charges are being laid? I can only speak for myself um, from this perspective because really I do feel a lot more comfort knowing that finally enforcement is happening and that these individuals have a very clear message being sent by the police, um, not only through uh, their media releases, but also through their actions now, um, a very clear difference from what we had seen in the first few weeks. Um, Originally, whenever there was a lull of silence, the fear that it would, the honking or the noise would begin again was constant. But now I do finally feel that this terrible, terrible month is finally coming to a close. And for that, I'm grateful. But without a doubt, no matter how much gratitude I might feel in this moment, there needs to be accountability for how this could have possibly happened. And accountability, by that do you mean Ottawa police, local government, provincial? How, how far do you, do you need this accountability to be examined? Personally, I feel that the action or inaction in a lot of cases, to be quite frank, all of it has to be investigated. The clear, clear, clear inaction from the Ottawa police services from the very get-go um, has and this can't be argued, it enabled and emboldened these individuals for this entire time. And that inaction and the lack of response from all levels of government from the day this began um, 
that is what created this unprecedented situation, the utter lack of response from anybody. Now, you know, as you and I have been uh, speaking, in terms of what we've been showing people at home, we, we continue to see arrests being made uh, in, along the protest site. We are now looking uh, on the predominant side of the screen on the right, uh, protest tents, vehicles being taken away, uh, torn down. Uh, one person to the bottom of the screen uh, being arrested right now by uh, police involved in today's actions. And part of the strategy today, Lexi, has been to clear the protest away from Wellington Street, which again is on the southern border of the parliamentary precinct. But they're trying to put protesters or lead protesters further away south, down streets like O'Connor, Bank, but into more residential areas. Are you concerned about safety for tonight? I'm very concerned. Um, while we have seen a very significant increase in the police presence in Ottawa as a whole, much of that has been concentrated in the less residential areas. And there is more fear downtown, not necessarily within our homes, but, well, for me personally, but there is fear on the streets because these people who have believed for weeks now that the law doesn't apply to them, that they're exempt from the law, that they can do whatever they want, they are now being faced with the harsh reality that there are consequences to their actions and that, in fact, the law does apply to them. Um, it is frightening on the streets because you can see them. They have illegally occupied our streets for the past few weeks, and now they are all wandering about. And they're not able to do the same actions that they have been doing. So it sort of leads you to wonder, what will they do next? Um, since they're allowed to roam freely, when we've already undergone so much suffering and harassment at a direct hand, from them and people, everyone is telling, we're, we all tell one another, stay inside, be careful, stay safe, especially now because of the trust that has been broken and the overall handling of the situation. I don't think there's a lot of faith that's left in the city to protect its residents. Zexi, I appreciate how difficult these uh, past few weeks have been for you. So thank you very much for uh, speaking with us today. Really appreciate it.